you know, the majority of you will take a look at the title of this video and, you know, name of the church maybe is not that familiar to you. The name of the individual that was allowed to run wild in this church, despite his history, that might not be familiar to you as well. And because of that, this video will, you know, not get a lot of views at all. But the reason that I talk about these situations in the church, the corruption and the wolves that occupy the pulpits, is because we are trying to shine a light for others to see the darkness that is within these walls of the church. And also to help others that, you know, may be thinking about attending one of these churches to pump the brakes and think otherwise. You know, I've had people reach out to me and say, you know, thanks to the video that you did about this church or, you know, these leaders in the church or whatever it may be, we didn't attend. We thought about going, we were researching churches in our area and we saw your video and we said, uh -uh, we're not going to go there. And again, you know, this video may get 100, 200 views, something like that. But I still believe that it's important to talk about and discuss to help protect other potential victims. So we're going to get into exactly what happened here with Edgefield, Nashville in just a second. But before we do that, I want to welcome all of you to Not By Sight News. Yes, blind Christian guy here reporting to you, reminding you as always, we walk by faith, not by sight. For someone like me, that's kind of my only option. Speaking of that, for those interested, you want to know my story how did I go blind? How do I operate my entire ministry without being able to see? I made a video that explains it all. You will find a link to that in the description section of all my videos. And if you really enjoy and appreciate my work and you'd like to contribute with a donation to help me out, a couple different ways you could do that. One by hitting the super thanks button on the YT video here, or join my Patreon for as little as five bucks a month, patreon.com slash not by site news link in the description. You guys want to get access to all of these videos before they hit the main YT platform well, when you join my Patreon, that's exactly what you're going to get, along with a bunch of other cool features. I hope you'll check it out and join me. Again, it's patreon.com slash news. Big thank you to everybody already contributing and those thinking of doing so. Thank you as well. Your generosity is greatly appreciated. Now, there is a lot of information as it comes to Michael Brake and Edgefield, Nashville. This is a church that is affiliated with the SBC and also Nine Marks. Now, Nine Marks is a very, uh, a very dangerous sort of a doctrine type of a church that really looks to put its leaders above congregation, even though, you know, if you look up some things about Nine Marks congregations, they'll appear to be congregational, like they'll actually let the congregation take, play, you know, take part in important votes. But on the other hand, you look at the way their leaders are. They often use exalted terms in speaking of one another. And it's really protecting the culture of the church, the pastors, the leadership, and all of that. And you already know about all the junk that's come out in the SBC over the course of the last couple of years. As I said, there is a lot to this story. I am going to be posting a link for you over on my Patreon at patreon.com slash notbysightnews. It is going to be a full report on Edgefield, Nashville, and Michael Brake. I'm only going to be covering some of it with you here on this video because if I dissected it all, I'd be doing a video on this for two hours. But if you want to read it, you can go to the Patreon. It's free to join my Patreon, okay? You can join it for free at patreon.com slash notbysightnews. When you do, you will get access to these links that I provide over there. But if you do want my early uh, access to the full video commentary before it goes up on YT, then you can become a paid member for as little as five bucks a month. But let me just give you a little bit of a history here because again, I want to encourage people to stay away from Edgefield, Nashville. They allowed a man in Michael Brake, who is a registered so, and you know, you guys know what I mean when I say so. They allowed this man to be allowed around little ones when he joined the church back in the mid 2000s. And I will point out to you that this is an individual that served multiple jail sentences for inappropriate behavior slash mistreatment of little ones, okay? Even upon getting out of jail, he, the, the girl that he married ended up having uh, two young ones of her own that were around the same age as the ones that he, you know, did inappropriate behavior and mistreatment to, okay? And when I say that, I'm talking about the whole thing. And the, the ages were around 12, 13. So... His behavior had continued after his first sentence. Also, he, he apparently got into an altercation with 
um, a police officer that got him in some more trouble. Uh, he got physical in that situation. And yet here he came with his wife, who, by the way, for the time, for a long time, was the only other one who knew about his past, his past criminal history. But he starts attending the church in the mid 2000s. And it was a couple from England that started attending Edgefield Nashville back in 2020. And they did so because there was an individual who was the associate pastor at the time that was actually from England. And so, you know, recommended that they come to Edgefield, Nashville until they started learning. And a lot of it thanks to their own research, because oh man, you can't expect church leadership to actually look into the past of, of Michael Brake. But they found all of his convictions. They found that the church had been lying, had been covering things up, including allowing Brake to conduct and direct a church play called Uncle Phil's Diner. And in the production, he had around him, yes, a bunch of little ones. Church officials care about Brake's past? Absolutely not. In fact, he even held a screening. They even, you know, had a, you know, a viewing of it. They even did something at his house and had the little ones over there too. He was allowed in various different home group Bible studies where little ones were present. He even took a job as a church cook where he was again around little ones. It wasn't until around late 2023 that all of a sudden reform started to come and the congregation was finally informed about break status where they had started implementing a chaperone to go around with break around the church. He had to, they had to sit with them during service. At, at first it was his wife, but then many people called that out for being wrong. And then they replaced her with somebody else in the church, another leader, but they even allowed, and this is their various church meetings. Again, you're going to see the full write up the full scope of this on my Patreon but they even voted to allow break to even use the facilities to be able to have access to them where again, he would, you know, be around little ones. Currently, now I'm, I'm, I'm coming to the end here. Currently, break is not attending Edgefield, Nashville. And this is again, after all sorts of back, backlash came out about his position there, being able to be involved in ministry around little ones and all of that. And he's currently thinking about not renewing, well, I can't imagine why, not renewing his status there at Edgefield, Nashville, and maybe seeking to attend another church in Nashville instead. But I will also point out to you that church officials have not wanted to involve a true third party investigation here into the mishandling of allowing Brake to basically, again, run wild in the church. They said that they would handle it on their own, an internal investigation, which we know never works. And again, it's often about protecting the so in the situation, that being break, and then preaching to the congregation about grace, about love, and how this is redemption for break. Can we all have forgiveness? Yes. But at the same time, there are consequences for sin you commit, especially when it involves little ones and allowing people like Brake to be not only around them, but even directing a play where he was basically overseeing them. But again, the church was more concerned about protecting themselves. And then when the couple from England started asking questions and doing you know enough research on their own that apparently their own senior pastor couldn't do, then all of a sudden, everything comes out. Let me ask this question. Are there any victims of, at Edgefield, Nashville during the time that Michael Brake was there? If you look at the statistics on SOS, okay, where there's one, there's more victims. And we already know he had multiple ones in the past. Okay? But what did he want to do? He wanted to get involved in directing a play where he knew little ones were going to be around him but the church didn't care. How about this question? If he does decide to go to another church in Nashville, is Edgefield going to inform other churches in the Nashville area about this guy's past? About how they dropped the ball with him? I doubt it. I highly doubt it. 
So we will see what comes out of this. But again, I, I got a big article for you over on the Patreon. You can read the full scope. Look, God bless the couple from England who did their own research about break that brought a lot of this out into the open there. And again, it, it's another SBC affiliated church. We know their history. This is not a time for Christians to, you know, bury their head in the sand and pretend that corruption is not going on within your church building, within your congregation. For those that, you know, can't handle this, and this channel may not be for you, but we expose darkness here. We shine a light to protect others, to protect victims, to protect the little ones. When church leadership doesn't, then who will? We all have to step up and do our best. And again, this will not, this video will not garner many views at all. But if it can just help one, maybe one family that sees this and says, you know what? Oh, we were thinking about going to Edgefield, Nashville, not any longer. Then I believe it was worth it. But I want to hear from you. You can let me know your thoughts in the comment section. And also don't forget, if you do enjoy and appreciate my work, and you'd like to help out the ministry, you can click that super thanks button and make a donation that way or join the Patreon again for as little as five bucks a month. Patreon.com slash news. Link in the description. What I want to do right now, something I do on all these videos, let's end this video on hope. It's part of my ministry outreach. This is an altar call. I've been doing this on my videos since 2016. No matter what it is that I'm discussing in the church, exposing the corruption of the wolves that occupy its pulpits, we always want to give people that opportunity to receive Christ as Savior. That being said, anybody watching now, if you are somebody who has not yet received Jesus as Lord and Savior and you would like to do so, I want to lead you in a prayer to do that right now. This is a prayer you could do in your own words, but I will give you the steps you need to bring it before the Lord today. First thing that you want to do right off the top, acknowledge you are a sinner. That is something that we all are. The good news is that God gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to die on that cross for the sins of all the world as he died and rose again for you and me. He paid the cost. What you have to do is repent of your sin. That means to turn from sin, not just to say you're sorry and then jump back to your old ways, but to actually turn from sin, which are those lifestyles, patterns, habits, behaviors, things in your life that go against the word of God. If you humbly go before the Lord, though, and ask him to forgive you, he'll wipe your sin away. The Bible says he doesn't remember it any longer. And then you invite Jesus into your life to be your Lord and Savior. When you do that, you become born again, a child of God. You will have eternal life. Trust me when I tell you there is no greater decision that you will ever make than the one you do to give your life to Christ. And I pray you make that decision today. Again, more info down below. Thank you all again so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. I'll be back with more. You guys take care. Please be safe out there. God bless each and every single one of you. And I'll talk with you soon.